Hello, this is Chess Guy. In this video, I'll be showing how to do a modular wireless menu system in Linux Planet 3. So the first thing we're going to want to do is place down a controlnator, and inside of this controlnator, we're going to have a counter that's set to one, and when it counts the one, it resets itself. This will act as a pulse switch for the signal that we're going to use. And yeah, I'm just going to call this player input X. And I'm going to do something similar for my circle button. This will be player input circle. We're also going to create a signal that activates for 0.1 seconds when the player enters the controlinator. We're going to have a timer and it's going to count for um, 0.1 seconds. This is going to activate a microchip that has two signals or two tags in it. I'm going to call this bool. Menu go to. And I'm going to call the other one percentage menu go to. So essentially, I'm letting my game know that I'm going to be using a percentage here. I have a percentage value of 1. We're also going to let the game know that we are currently changing menus. So it's going to either be true or false, or on or, on or off. Alright. We're going to do something similar for when the player leaves the controlinator. So, when the player leaves the controlinator, we are going to reset our menu. And this is going to have, um, this is going to be our menu level zero, so it's going to turn off all the other menus. It's like so. Now let's create our first menu. So I'm going to create a microchip. And we're going to compare this percentage value, which we have as 1%. And if our 1% value is equal to the percentage menu go to, then we are going to do something. I need to find my percentage comparison logic. I've done a tutorial on this in another video. Feel free to check it out. So I'm going to compare the 1% value to the change percentage value. And this is where the boolean comes in. If the menu is changing, so bool menu go to, if it's on, we're going to check for two cases. If it is equal, then we know that the change to percentage is equal to the menu level that we want to change to. So if it is equal and we are changing then we're going to activate this AND gate and if it is not equal and we're changing we're going to activate the other AND gate. Because there's two states I'm going to use a selector to determine which state we're in. If we're in the first state this is going to be our menus activated and if we're in the second state that's going to be our menu deactivated. So if I jump into my controlinator it's going to got to wire up our input here. So if I jump into my controlinator, it's doing the right thing. You need to make sure that this is set to signal strength. It was on closeness before. We need this to be on signal strength. And that works. So now the 1% value is equal to the 1% value and it activates the menu. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to compartmentalize all of this into a microchip that we will use later. If our menu is on, you're going to have an array of items that we can select from. So here we're going to create a microchip and if 
before we go any further, we're going to need another signal here. This is going to be Bool menu on. So if the menu is on, this signal will be activated. And we're going to look and see if the signal is activated. Now be careful to not make the signal less than zero. It will crash the game. So I'm going to make it just about 15 or so degrees. We're going to check to see if this signal is on. When I jump into Controlnator, signal activates, letting me know that this is indeed the case. This is our selection, so we're going to have a whole bunch of choices we're going to select, but because we have one, we're just going to have one option. So I'm going to make this logic here. We're going to call this percentage menu option. We're going to give this a value of 1%. going to make this small because I'm going to need to use this later. So now here we're going to look for that percentage menu option as well. Make sure these are both set to signal strength. Alright, so the menu is on, so it should have a value of, let's see, what? Menu on. Should be a hundred percent. It is. Okay, we got hundred percent. We got one percent. It's because I changed the the name of this tag sensor, because this value is one. And it just remembered that. So this is a hundred. It's one. All right. So if the current menu is activated, now we want to compare our menu option. So this is our first option. So I've got a one percent battery here going to compare this 1% value to the signal that we have determined for the, the player determines and if these are both true we know this, this is the option so this is going to be activated and if the player presses the X button actually we got to say this if the percentage is equal if the selection percentage is equal to the item value and is the current menu then we trigger it and if it is highlighted the player presses the X button we will go to the next menu if the go to menu logic was here we can use this here we're going to do a similar thing with the timer it counts down from 0.1 seconds so when the player presses the X button, when it's highlighted, it will go to the next menu. I'm going to make it horizontal and skinny, so it's just like this. This is menu percentage 1, we're going to go to menu 2. This is going to be this menu. So let's just give this a test. Alright, it looks like it works. So when I enter the controlnator, it sees that it's the first item. And when I press the X button, it goes to menu 2, which deactivates the first menu. So that works. Let's create another menu here. So we can copy and paste what we've done here. Let's also create a camera. So when the current menu is activated, we're going to trigger a camera. I like to use crossfade. Make this something small, like 0.4 seconds. Don't disable the controllers. And when the player leaves the controller, we want to reset the camera. So make this follow player. 
make it zero and disable controllers. Nope. Now I want to enter the controlinator. Do that. Now the camera can change. Alright, now that I got that neat, you can copy and paste it. Now we have more options. We got our play, our options, and our exit. So we change the values to 2, 3 for our first, second, third options. This is going to be menu level 2. And here we're going to have four options that we can select from. Instead of just having one option, we're going to trigger a microchip that has many microchips in it, many different options. And we can select these. Well, we can select these with a selector, which can be determined when the player presses up or down on the left stick. We need to invert the left, or sorry, the up and down on the on the left stick. And now we can cycle through our options. Make sure that when you have your control nader that it is set to receive. And now it will receive the player's input and now we can cycle through our three options. And because it's totally wireless, we don't have to do any logic or any more work. I could add another item, or I could add another 100 items. It won't change anything. This makes this very easy to add items to a list. Now we need another logic here. This is where we're going to have our circle button. So we're going to use our player input circle. If the player presses the circle button, you're going to take them back level. We're going to use our 0.1 second timer. We're going to trigger this and we're going to send them back to menu 1. This is menu 2. We're going to send them back to menu 1. I'm going to reset my camera here. Now I can press the X button, I can go up and down when I press the circle button, it takes me back to my first menu. So we're pretty much done, we just add one more menu for our four options over here. So I have another item on my list, so all I have to do is go into here, you can just increase this one value. Make this 4%. Go. And just adjust the percentages as need be. So we got a 3%. This is menu 3. This will take us back to menu 2. This is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's tie our circles, the output of our circle, the first output, to the top to the title and just keep on doing that for each item in our menu. Going to readjust my cameras. And then while I have a menu, I can press the X button, up and down, whoops, this should take us to menu 3, this will be 4 and 5, alright, so I can press the X button, 
I can have my first, or my, sorry, first menu here, second menu. It's my third menu. And so forth. Ah. When I press circle. Actually, that does the right thing. Just making sure it doesn't go back two levels. And when the player presses the exit button, we can have it so that they end the level. That would be triggered over here. Rewinding because I realized I could have done this with the timer instead. That's the same output. So now if I give this level a playtest, it should work as expected. Have my title, I press play, my option of four levels. Now each level would be essentially its own menu, but instead of being a menu like this, it would transition to gameplay. It could be a puzzle, or a platformer, or it could be an action RPG. It really depends on the level you're going for here. I can press circle, and when I press the exit, it takes player to the exit. All right, so that is how you build a menu system in the Big Planet 3. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.